Psalms 118 verse 22. Psalms 118 verse 22 he says. I think we should read from verse 16. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die but live. Do you know you cannot die unless God permits. Oh, many of you want to die, I guess. You're not saying amen. <laughs> Hello. What did I say? You cannot die until heaven permits. Oh, you're not here this morning. This Good morning. Is this good morning or good night? <laughs> Since you moved the Sunday from morning to evening, you, are, you do not know which part of the world you are. You are morning or evening. Whatever it is, I want you to stay your spirit, keep your spirit sharp and buoyant because I want to download what the Holy Spirit has put in my heart, in my spirit. And those who need translation set, who need translation set? All of you can understand English, some of you. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. If you are living, the reason why you are alive is to declare. The reason why God gave us extended living is not for you to enjoy social media and do your, your, your dreams, uh, your bucket list. I always like to say this, you may have a bucket list, but you, if, me, if you end up in a bucket, what are you going to do? If you do not know what English is all about, don't kick the bucket earlier. <laughs> you know this idiom called kick the bucket? You may have all the bucket list, but... If you do not know what he is saying, then you may end up doing the wrong things, being in the wrong place, getting caught with the wrong people, and then dying with a needless casualty. I pray that this will not be our portion. Amen. I shall not die but live. Declare the works of the Lord. The reason why you and I are alive so that we can continue to declare his works. Amen. Somebody say, I am here. Oh, come on, say it loud. I'm here. I'm alive to do his will, to do his will, to do his work, and to finish my assignment on planet Earth. His word, his work, and his will must combine together. His word, his works, and his will must combine together. That dimension must come into your life. Work, word, works, will. The word of God, inside his word is his will. And if you find his will, you will do his works well. You are in the will of God. How do you know in the will of God you do his works? That's why you must embrace his word, listen to his word, hearken to his word, hungry for his word, then you can know his will. Because his will is his in, in his word. And once you recognize what God is saying from his word, then you can finish his works. And finish with a style. That's why I believe if you are God's fellow servants, workers, sons and daughters, if you have picked up assignment from heaven, you will finish in such a style. You will not die a death that everybody is dying. Hello. If you want to go home, you'll go home in a style. And you have left an indelible mark on people. Amen. Long after you're gone, legacy continues. That's the kind of life you must live. Amen. Otherwise, people will say, Ya Allah, better for him to die. You know what I'm saying? You want to leave your legacy behind. Are we doing funeral service tonight? Yes. What is a funeral service? Die to self. <laughs> Yourself must come to an end. So that he can be magnified and glorified. Amen. I want to welcome doctor and his family. That's Dr. Anthony. And, 
and your beloved daughter there. What's your name? Come again. Srina. Oh, such a sweet name. Srina, new beginning for you. I saw you worshipping. You really love to worship, aren't you? Amen. Worship will be a portion tonight. I will praise you, verse 21, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Who is the chief cornerstone? Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Are you there? Jesus is the chief cornerstone. You can read that in the Mark chapter 12. Have you not even read these scripture? The stones which the builders rejected have become chief cornerstone. The book of Luke chapter 20. There are many, many places you can read about the chief cornerstone. But I want to key into this scripture tonight and then take you into many other scriptures. Are you ready for this? Thank you, mom. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. I pray that tonight the Holy Spirit will enlarge your capacity to receive to retain and to release in the days to come. Amen. There's so many things that you have received during the prophetic declaration. How many of you were really built on the inside? You remember the spirit energized what? Come on, you're not talking to me. Tonight, I'm going to preach. We're going to pray. I'm going to preach. We're going to pray. Can we do that? Yes. I'm going to ask you a question. You've got to interact with me. Yes. So the preaching is going to be different. It's going to be different. I'm not going to be the one talking and bless you and go home. Yeah. No, we're going to pray. I'm going to pause for a while. And then we're going to push. We're going to pray. As you are standing there, sitting there, we're going to pray. And then after that, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you understand? Don't go to the toilet. <laughs> you have a way of escaping, you know. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Send him. <laughs> this is the attitude must change. Here I am, here am I, here am I, send me. Not here am I, here am I, send somebody else. You're always not ready. You know why? Because it's a struggle on the inside. I pray all your struggles will come to an end. Amen? Amen. All your limitations will come to an end. Because God is not interested in you. He's interested in the Christ in you. He's not interested in me at all. He's interested in the Christ that I've become. That's what he's looking for. Do you think I love you? No, I don't. Look at your face. <laughs> Let me be very honest with you. I'm not Mr. Jesus to love everybody. But I love the Christ in that person. That's why I enjoy seeing you worshipping. I just enjoy people who are really, really pure in their heart. When they say something, when they worship, I enjoy seeing that because that Christ is manifesting. I don't care about you. Sorry. But I look at you. I look at the Christ. There is such hunger inside that person. The young or old, doesn't matter who you are. Like Uncle Matthew said, Brother Matthew, you told Rose, what time is the service? 8.45. I'll be there at 8.30. <laughs> Rose told us, Uncle is coming, you know, he wants to come at 8.30. I said, oh, that's good. I saw him, he was one of the first ones. Give him a hand. Yeah. He's hungry to be here tonight. Yeah. Huh? 8.35 arrived. See, he was early. Because he's hungry. He wants to come here. Because he's been asking, where, where, what, did, what did Pastor preach? I want to know. What did he say? You know, what is the words? So those who are scribe, people who scribe the word, share with him. It's not easy to write what I'm saying sometimes. You've got to go back to the archive file and listen to the word. Amen? But some of you are very lazy. You need to just come on Sunday, listen to the word, hoping for you to become blessed. It won't happen. You have to be diligent. Yeah. Amen? You have to be diligent. You've got to go back and listen to what the Holy Spirit has said, what he's saying. Yeah. Go back to the notes. Go back to the word. Go back to the YouTube. Go back to the archive file. Spend an hour listening. I told you, read Proverbs one chapter a day. Today is what? Today is, today is the 20th chapter. How many of you have read? Put up your hand. Many of you are not even doing what I ask you to do. 
This is really serious. Huh? You need to read one. Remember I told you during the prophetic declaration, take, or even last Sunday, was it two Sundays ago I told you? I said, read one chapter a day on book of Proverbs because Proverbs has 31 chapters. One day, one chapter. Is it a problem? Just like prescription, you're giving pills to people. Am I right? This is biblical prescription. One day, one chapter, what's the problem? You should be able to enjoy it. Amen. And I told you, if you're in the marketplace, we are doing business, the book of Proverbs must become your foundation. Because so much is inside there. How to deal with people. How to stay away from wicked men. How to sense the market force. How to handle money. How to handle greed. How to handle covetousness. How not to touch the wisdom that comes from the system of darkness. How to touch the wisdom that comes from the throne room. It's all hidden inside the book of Proverbs. Timothy, I personally told you, read, study the book of Proverbs. If you're in the marketplace. Even if you're not in the marketplace. Students, young ones, you must study. Love the book of Proverbs. Because Solomon touch so many things and he penned it down all the things he shouldn't have done he penned it down in the book of proverbs one of the things he said what in proverbs chapter 4 listen to the sound advice that comes from your parents read proverbs it's all there today is chapter 20 you should be, should read the book, book the whole book, whole chapter by today another 10 more days or 11 more days you know. But this, this month, the coming month, February 28th, you can read two chapters extra. Doesn't matter. Every month, read Proverbs. Make sure you read. Throughout the year, you read. By the time 365 days, you will become wiser than you can, you can imagine. You'll be able to do things that you cannot do before. And it's so important, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets... Jesus Christ himself, what? Jesus Christ himself is what? Come on, talk to me. What is he? He is a chief cornerstone. In whom? Can we all read together? In whom? The whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you are also being built together. For what? For a dwelling place of God. In the spirit. Amen. It says what? We are all fitted together. My question to you. Are you fitted together? These things. That's why you need beloved wives to help. This light is blinding people. They purposely install this so that I won't see your face. Whether you are sleeping or not, we don't know. That's why they catch you by the spirit. No. Whether you are here or not. Most of the time, I have to use my spiritual glasses to know where you are. What's that? Ah, now I can see Angel, Angel at the back. Just now I cannot see you. Alright. The book of Ephesians, let's read in... Uh, Message Bible, verse 20. He used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation. That's why he used apostolic men. Amen? He used who? He used people like us, your founding fathers in the faith who are speaking things prophetically. Hello? So when you come to church, you must know that somebody is speaking the word of God into the future. Amen? Amen? This is five, five fingers here. This is five-fold ministry. And I explained to the people in this house before. What is this? This is apostle. What is this? This is prophet. What is this? This is not a bad finger. As your mind goes wrong. Because you've been watching too many social media. Hello. This is not bad finger. This is God's finger. Somebody is training you. That's why you think this way. Oh, you see? Even if I show you, you say, you see, how can that you show me like this? Because somebody is training you. What's wrong with you guys? 
If your mind is pure, all things are pure. If your mind is holy, all things are holy. If your mind is corrupted with all kinds of nonsense, you see everything, you see? Like first day in parliament, what they talk about, change the dress of the, uh, of the air stewardess. Didn't you hear the first day of the sitting in parliament? And Anthony Locke have to fire these people. No? All he can think about is change dress. Change your head, he said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What a... Th- this is so... I mean, Malaysian airline is going down. All he can think of is change their dress. Good, good for a man like Anthony Locke. Taro, this person. This is not a political talk. But I'm telling you, the church needs to know. Are you hearing me? So God used what? Apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now he's, he's, he's using you. He's using you. Fitting you in bricks. Brick by brick. Stone by stone. With Christ Jesus. As the cornerstone. So when you come to church. Brick by brick. Stone by stone. He's fitting you. That's why you must not become a stumbling block. You must become a building block. Write it down somewhere. I must not become a stumbling block. I am a building block in the house of God. If you are a stumbling block, it's time to change. Your family cannot be a stumbling block. Your life cannot be a stumbling block. Your dreams and your desires cannot be a stumbling block. It must become a building block. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a building block. You are not a stumbling block. I am not a stumbling block. My wife is not a stumbling block. The devil will want you to stumble. But God wants you to become a building block. Because we are brick by brick, connected stone by stone. With who? With Christ Jesus. And he gives us a foundation. I want you to pray for a while in the spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost with me. Come on. I want you to pray. Every point that I'm going to hit, we're going to pray. We're going to pray that we become a stumbling block, not a building block in the house of God. Lord, help me, O God. Help us, O God. Right now, come on. You can stand and pray. You can sit and pray. But pray with intensity. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, intensify. In Jesus' name. You and I are a building block. Because we are connected to Jesus, the cornerstone. We are not a stumbling block. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let there be a conviction in our hearts, O God. We are the building block, not a stumbling block. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Let me pick one young people and one mature people. You know, I'm going to do a project with the, with the youths. We'll take rice and put it in the soil and we're going to grow it. Put in the soil, rice, three category of rice. Equally with the same, mom probably need to help me. Put it in the uh, special container with the rice. And one of the rice, we speak nothing. Another one, we speak all the negative things. Curse it. I'll give it to you. You can curse all you want with the rice. Talk nonsense. And the other one, you speak prophetically. I can guarantee you. Let's take a challenge. I can guarantee you the two... The one that you said nothing and the one you're saying all the nonsense, both will be the same. But the one that you speak prophetically, I'll take a challenge. The one you continue to speak prophetically, you can bring about change. Because the Bible tells us, all creation is waiting for the sons of God to rise. You want to take this challenge? All the young people? Can you grow your rice in your house? Okay, I'm going to pick one person here. Let's, Davina, stand up. 
Tell me. How old are you now? Turning 18. Give her a hand. Giant killer. City taker. How many times in your life that you have stumbled or you think somebody is stumbling you? You don't know the number. That means countless time. First question. How many times you think you have stumbled people? Let's be open. Four or five times. So she can't even, even remember. No. Wow. Detail. How many times that you think people have stumbled you? Wow. Quite equally same. Huh? Oh, pretty good. Huh? Give her a hand. Sharvin, how many times you have stumbled people? <laughs> At least once. So righteous, huh? <laughs> sure, no. How many times people have stumbled you? Okay, okay, okay. Hold it. This is good. I want to hear this kind of answer. That shows to me he's paying a lot of attention to himself. Means, sir. Uh, you see, this is how we are all. We all think that we are great and mighty, you know. You are right. You feel that you have only stumbled somebody once. And you feel that everybody else has stumbled you. Do you notice? <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. Do you notice or not? Because this is how we are. There is a way that seems right in the eyes of a man, but the end is what? Is destruction. Some versions say death. Some versions say leading to hell. Are you following? That's why it's so important for us to come under godly counsel. Because I can say I am right. How do you know that I'm right? Somebody who, who is spiritually strong must be able to tell me what you're doing is wrong. That's why we need fathers in the faith. Are you following? That's why we need to be so connected to this chief cornerstone. How do you know Malaysia is a developing country? You need to benchmark it with another country. Am I right? Yeah. How do you know France is better than, than Switzerland? There's something that you can check. You see the GDP of the country. You, you see certain things. You can see the work sector. You see the banking sector. You see the financial sector. Everything you compare. Then you know. Am I right? There must be something for you to spar with. To know where you are. Otherwise, how do you know? How do you know, Sherwin? That you are right. Somebody must come and tell you. That's why I always tell you. Trees don't enjoy their own fruits. Am I right? Have you seen tree eating their own fruit and say, nom, 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 very nice old. Never happen. It will never happen. Your fruits are tasted by somebody else. Somebody else will come and tell you, brother, sister, I really felt that your prayer just now, the way you worship really touched my heart. I know truly the hand of God is upon you. You have inspired me in many ways. Because the fruits that they carry, Christ must manifest in them. Then can inspire you. Am I right? Okay. In this house, who has inspired you the most? Who dared to stand up and speak for the person? I said today the worship, the preaching session will be different. I told you it's going to be interactive. Who can stand up and say, this person has really inspired me in this way. Because remember, we are all fitted together as chief corner, to the chief cornerstone. Who is the chief cornerstone? Jesus. Brick by brick, stone by stone, we are fitted. Am I right? Yeah. So this session tonight, Friday night, is going to be different. It's going to be interactive. It's going to be praying, preaching, prophesying all together. Package. Stand up and tell me, who has inspired you in this house? In which area? Stand up, one of you. Yes, give him, give him a hand. Yeah. 
Okay, where's the mic? Because this is on tape, so otherwise they cannot hear. Where's Pastor Paul now? Okay, Sherwin, are you strong enough, Sherwin? Come. Are you long? Are you, just, you're just tall enough, to, right? Can you help me with this light? Push it up a bit because this middle light here, something is wrong. That's why we need giants in the house. <laughs> the middle one. Wow. Push it up. Wow. Yeah, thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> Give him another hand. We need, we need tall people. We don't need tanga in the house. All right. For a while I've gone blind. My goodness, I cannot see. Okay, Kubin. Okay. There are two people that inspired me the most. Eh. Yeah. There are two people that inspired me most in this house. And the first one is Adel. Because uh, from last year to this year, I see Adel. She won't complain while doing anything. She will always just serve, serve, and serve. And and I just look at her every time she will be Edu, sleeping. Would you like to stand up? <laughs> she will. <laughs> <laughs> she will be flip sweeping the floor, and I'll be looking at her. Wait, she's doing this, and she won't even complain. She will do a lot of. Were stuff you complaining? <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, confess it. Cough it out. Sometimes, sometimes. Yes, good. Sometimes. You yeah. see, whenever you are testifying, you must also know God has done something with you. That's why you're realizing it's a reflection. I'm helping you. I'm not putting you on the, on the spot. We all have to stand before God and say, Lord, cleanse me. I want to be made whole. That's what church is all about. Not hiding somewhere and looking very religious, you know. Let us be changed. Amen. Thank you, Kubin. He's so courageous. Give him a hand. So, correct. Second? Okay. The second person is... James Coco. James Coco. <laughs> James, stand up, James. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he he inspired me most when praying, worshiping, and everything. I I I mostly last year every time I pray and worship, I go ask him for advice about what I read in the Bible, what I pray about. I ask him, and he will always give me answers and answers. So I get inspired, and he also inspired me to. Wow. <laughs> James. So you've been discipling somebody. That's good. Give both of them another hand. Amen. All right. I need volunteers in this, this row here. Anyone? Stand up and say who inspired you the most throughout last year. And what, what is the thing? Like what could be in a shed? Come on, one of you, stand up. Odniel will understand. <laughs> Come on, in this row here, who has inspired you? It's a good time. Stand up and, and say something. Andrew, you're smiling there. Come on, give him a hand. Uh, for me, uh, both... James and Joshua, that the James way they serve, Joshua. diligently, on time. Joshua, stand up, Joshua. Committed, committed. So both of them, without fail, are really inspired by these people. Yeah. So can you become like them? Trying to. This trying year, to. all right, you disciple him. <laughs> Tell him what you've been doing, how you've been keeping your heart, because it all comes from your heart. Thanks again, Andrew. <laughs> Anybody else? In this row, I think uh, there can be more people. So, I'll come back here again. <laughs> this is interactive. I have about six points that we're going to pray. That we are not stumbling blocks. We are building blocks. In this row here. Who can stand up? <laughs> ah, Sharin, give her a hand. Uh, for me is um, the warriors who inspired me in my prayer All life. the warriors, stand up. Come on. Sister Jocelyn, Auntie Ruth, Rose. Come on. All the warriors, give them a hand. 
Odnil so worries. Odnil. <laughs> yeah, um, no matter what, uh, when I first entered uh, this church, uh, they were so welcoming. You know, I do not know how to prophesy and pray, and, but um, they were like my sisters encouraging me. And, um, and Auntie Ruth, even online, offline, how tired, whatever. Online, offline, hallelujah. She's 6 a.m., if it's, uh, it's a morning prayer, she's there. We have to call her, you know, she will call us. And uh, she's a great, uh, great warrior of Amen. God. Amen. So the warriors have really impacted you. So how can you multiply what you all have? Terin, what is in your heart to see? I mean, you cannot be just be happy with these three, four, right? What is in your heart? Um, like I think from the first time I came here and testified, the prayers, warriors has impacted and changed my life to be able to connect vertically to Christ, yeah. to hear him clearly, mm. help me to uh, arise every circumstances we are put in. You know, there are times that we have to go through a lot of trials. And um, so for, for my children, my daughters, for who they are, even our marriage and everything is a blessing from the uh, prayer and warriors. And, and I could see uh, this year in warriors, faith also inspiring us, you know. Amen. Every six a hand. Year, she's, she's there together up, praying faith. and pushing. Faith, and, uh, stand up and receive. Yeah. I think um, my husband used to say that um, Einstein said, if you've been doing something, um, the result, uh, if you keep doing the same thing, the results is going to be the same. Mm. So all this while, if uh, you want certain changes, the something that you're doing must change as well. Uh, Amen. Um, let's try out maybe committing yourself 6 a.m. once a week. Let's Amen. try and see what's Amen. going to Amen. 6 a.m. once a week. At least once a week you join the prayer warriors online. Amen. 6 a.m. Because these people are 6 a.m. they are online. Once in a while I'll just show up because whenever I show up they won't pray. <laughs> so that's why... I want them to continue to push, but sometimes there'll be something strong coming into my spirit to release the prophetic word. I just join the prayer group. You know? So I, I will show up. I will appear. Like how Christ appears once in a while to just check out what's going on. But I really salute. At 6 a.m., consistently, once a week, you guys are pushing. Give them a hand. This is this so well fit with the scripture. Because now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone. With who? Christ Jesus. We're going to read John 17 in a short while. All right. Here. This group. Yes. Give, give the microphone. Thank you. Join. Yeah, okay. you introduce yourself. <laughs> some, some people are new here. They don't know oh, who you oh, are. Okay, hi, I'm Joan. Okay. Uh, so I have three people, actually. So the first two people are Auntie Shireen and Auntie Joycelyn. I like Shireen, stand up. There's Joycelyn. Stand up. Okay. The thing, well, how they inspired me is that whenever they worship or anything, right, I feel happy seeing them worship. <laughs> they have, like, so much of joy when they worship, the smile on their face, the movements and stuff and the third person was Dashaka. Ah. Yeah, Dashaka Dash. also. Stand up, Dash. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why Dashaka is okay. she has like so much of work on her and stuff to do and she'll always like here. She always shows up on time. I think even when her feet was injured, she was helping us with the skit and she was helping with the dance and everything. She like she takesa already her feet was so she like just do la like that. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Give Dash a hand. Hallelujah. That's why we are all fitted together. Do you see the importance? 
quiet the church. Imagine, you know, if, you, if I take all of you and put you in the community, the community will be impacted. Amen. This is what I'm trying to tell you. We cannot just enjoy ourselves just inside the, these four walls. If I take you and put you in one community, because of you, you'll be inspired. I thank God, Marian, stand up, please. The day you all stand up, give her a hand. Because the day they had a community meeting, I was told that somebody was talking nonsense and she has to take over everything and chair the whole meeting. And Helen, Pastor Helen, stand up. You see, they were there in the community, there were some non, non Christians, right? How many of them? In the in the the whole how many non Christians beside our church people? About four or five? The four or five of them they saw how you guys were taking the leadership. But where do you learn this from? From the house. So when you go into the community, if you see somebody is manifesting, you must take charge. Where did they learn from? This is how God trained David to kill bear and lion before he can stand before Goliath and speak to the Goliath. You uncircumcised Philistine. How dare you defy the people of God. Please sit down. You understand what I'm saying? This is why I'm using you to show you if you know how to fit yourself to the cheap cornerstone and fit well, I can take you and put you anywhere. You can impact and influence them. Amen? Continue. Who's going to share? Who? Just now, you pick the mic. Abby, come on. You have anybody inspiring you? Don't tell me not even one. I'm sure. Give her a mic. I'm sure she got somebody to inspire. Stand up. Abigail, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Abigail. Uh, I think it's probably, um, I think it's my atta and then Sarvin Tane because he always. Sarvin! <laughs> oh, come on, stand up. You see? <laughs> You're becoming popular now, Sarvin. <laughs> so you have inspired her. Let's find out what is this. Come on, share. Because he always smiles all the time. <laughs> Through an hour. <laughs> so I can see his face, surely. Avi, tell me, did he buy you tea life? <laughs> Afterwards, you order, huh? send to her. <laughs> who, who inspired you, Rose? No, who? Uh, my Ate. Ate, who is Ate? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, give her a hand. Shereen. <laughs> You're all related, huh? So, how did she inspire? How did. Okay, Shereen, smile only. Only smile. Huh? You know, like his, you know, vibe. Like his. There's a vibe he's sending. You know, like a. Like very joyful. Kind of joyful vibe. vibes. Oh, give him a hand. <laughs> Tarini, feel rested. I married a good one. <laughs> what else? What do your Ate inspired you? Worship, worship, yeah. Worship? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Give a hand. Okay, who else in this row? There are a few people here. Come on. Tebby. Are you? You're smiling there. Come on, stand up. Give her. Stand up, Tebby. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Tabita. <laughs> and the person that in inspires me most is is <laughs> is is Teacher Marian. Oh, come on, Marian, send out. She's speaking about you. How did she inspire you? Because the way she worships is like like her heart is so long for God. And like she set her eyes for God like that. It's so inspiring to see. Do you want to become like her? <laughs> okay, then you mentor her. What are the areas that you need to die to self? So she learned. Because she asked me one day, Dad, you've been, how on earth you are preparing your message with so many scriptures? I know you're so busy. 
My answer to you is what? What did I say to you? I say, you do not know the amount of death that I need to die. Dying by dying, Christ manifests real life. That was my answer. So spend time with her more. Take her out. Tell her what it is to worship God. That will be lesson 101. <laughs> Amen. Give them a hand. Give the mic to Timothy. I haven't heard you since last year. Come on. I want to hear from you. Who inspired you the most? Hi, my name is Timothy. Elias Poon. <laughs> Elias Poon, <Puen>, date ready. <laughs> okay, uh, actually, my side, uh, David and Kazea. Wow, David. Come on, stand up, David. Kazea is not here. You must yeah. tell her. Yeah, because when uh, we are joining here early time, Kirubai, no, sorry, notion. Admin in a hospital, Sunway Medical Center. Uh, really admire. They came, meet us. I think almost later. Yeah, timing, I don't know. But they came. That one. And uh, another finance side, dad and mom. <laughs> uh, mom is my coach. <laughs> yeah, she. That's why I'm married to her, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, <laughs> like, like that word. That make mom manage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So That's now right. I have a question. Oh, <laughs> How you can be like them? The hospitality. What are the areas that you need to change so that. Very late, right? It seems very late they came. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you are busy too. David, I'm sure you are tired. But what made you go and visit them? I will want to hear from you in a short while. But I want to hear from you. How you can become like them? Trying that, trying. Trying. <laughs> so David, it means you gotta spend some time with him. Share with him what actually caused you to go and visit them. It must be something. Not because you're looking so big, <laughs> but because there is a certain thing, your heart, your love for God, and you go the extra mile to do. Let me hear it from him. Give him the, give him the mic. Give them a hand. <laughs> so David, why did you visit them? Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm David. My another half is did not come today. Sorry. Um, actually, it's, uh, from day one, um, this is what I learned from my father. My father is very, very, my father works in the hospital. Mm. He very, he's also very hospitalized. He's <laughs> highly, Hospitable. He's hospita his hospitality. Yes. I learned from my father. At the same time, when I joined this church, definitely I will also learn this kind of thing from dad and mom. So from day one, whoever come and join to our church, whoever come and join, first time definitely we, 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 we want to do the best to show them this is not, this is really coming from our heart. That's it. Amen. You see, I want to show you, nobody will go to the extent like Ruth, you know, go and visit people in the hospital, even though she is not well, she's praying for somebody admitted in the hospital for, you know, heart condition, yet go and lay hands on people. Will you be able to do that by yourself without Christ, the chief cornerstone? It is Christ manifesting in us. That's why we can do what we cannot do naturally. I want you to pray that you will become. Take all these things that they have shared. Put it in your heart. I want you to pray. Say, Lord, lock me in. I want to be like this. Pray for a while until it, until it, until it gets into your spirit. Come on, pray for a while. Pray for a while. Pray for a while. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Make us to become, oh God. Only you can make us to become like you. The Christ factor. Only a changed life can change another life. Help us, O oh God. Change us. Change us to become like you. 
Yembranda la rabarianda la rabarianda la rabashanda la rabarianda la rabarianda la rabar. Thank you, Lord. Sombranda la rabarianda la rabashanda la rabarianda la rabarianda la rabab. Changes of God, changes on the inside, changes on the inside. Sombu randa rabashanda la rabarianda la rabab. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Take your Bibles to John 17. Let's read. Let me draw some things out from here. Tonight is a special night. I can tell you, you'll remember this night like never before. John 17. Verse 1. What did I say? John 17. There are 26 verses there. Let's read. Jesus spoke these words. Lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may be glorified, may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. God is the one who gives people to our life. Amen. Jesus himself said that he has given he was given an authority from the Father. The Father authorized Jesus. Do you know nothing happens unless he authorized? You cannot have authority until you are authorized. Amen? That's why the authority comes from Jesus. Because Jesus said, The Father has given him authority over all flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. I remember one day, many years ago, when early days when we used to go to Taman Yu, I don't know whether mom was with me. We went to witness in one of the house. He wanted to open a dog to bite me. Remember? Were you with me? He's a German shepherd dog, no? I remember in that house, 11 stroke something. He, he was angry with Christians. Maybe he was angry with Jehovah's Witness. I don't know what. I was in front of the house and the guy opened the dog to bite me. Opened the door. And the dog was coming out. I said, in the name of Jesus, came Brando Robo. The dog just fell right now. <laughs> On that day, this word became so alive. That God has given us authority over flesh. I, I remember it's a Singh family. So I said to him, never do that. I say, I'm not like one of them. He was shocked, you know. Never seen before. The dog listened to another voice. Because God has given us authority. Are you hearing me? God has given us power and authority to over flesh. That's why Noah can call all the animals to his ark. Because his spirit was communicating with those animals. Divine transfer, divine exchange. God has given us one of the most powerful tool to impact every flesh by the dimension you carry in your spirit. I pray that you capture this. Everything we do is frequency. Amen. Do you know that everything you do is frequency? Whether you say or don't say, your gesture, the way you look at somebody is frequency. Are you hearing me? And this is a powerful tool that God has given to us. You can use it negatively or you, you can use it for the glory of our king. Frequency. Everything you do is frequency. I was watching a video. One guy was saying, how to date a girl. Yeah, it's there in the TikTok all over the place. They put up videos like this, you know. How to go there and then seduce them. They have all this kind of young people. Watch out, eh? Yeah. All the young girls here, watch out. <laughs> There's a way that they can talk to you and you can fall for them. It's not sweet talk, dear. It's beyond this. They use some kind of frequency. Eye lip, lips movement, eye movement. Don't you know this thing? You're looking so holy, yeah? I haven't never heard these things before. Let's not pretend. Let's be real. This is how in the world is. That's how young girls fall for men. There's a way they move their lips. It gives you a seductive feeling. I have a lot of scriptures for this. One day I'll tell you. It's there in the book of, in the book of Proverbs. How seductress woman 
can take you out if you're not careful. Okay, all the young men say amen. Thank God you're not like one of them. And all the young girls say, wow. Thank God God saved me. Because there's a way that they can send to you. Oh, all of these people are looking so innocent. I, I'm special, all right? I didn't caught mom this way. That's why I'm speaking in front of her. I dare speak in front of her. I dare lie in front of her. You've got to be joking. I didn't try to go and, you know, use this manliness, manhood way to lure her in, to love me. Aha, uh -huh, not with me. The Lord spoke to me. I spoke to her. I don't know whether I shared with the doctor that day. Briefly, I was telling you about my testimony. How the Lord brought us together. The Lord spoke to me, this is your wife. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to her, this is your husband. But a year later, it took us one year process for God to bring us together. It was the word of God that brought us together. Moses died because of his word. God must give us the authority, amen? Talk to me, God must authorize us. I believe God is giving us the authority. You have the power and the authority to bring about government in your life. Wherever you go, that's why today I sent a word to Natasha. Suddenly I felt to send her a scripture, send her a word, just to encourage her. She said, boring like that, JB. I say, I didn't, I didn't answer her. Now I'm answering you. You can rise above the boringness because you are authorized by God. God has given us the power to prevail and the grace to govern. Amen. Young people especially, very easy to be bored. So it's very normal, <laughs> Natasha. But you can rise above it. Amen? Amen. Say after me, I can rise above it. Because God has given me the authority. God has given me the empowerment. He has empowered me. He has authorized me to have authority over all flesh. Where is that Jesus today? Jesus is in me. That means you can have authority. Over all flesh. I remember I, I, I shared with you, you. I think James you were walking in the jungle with me the other day. There was one time I said there's something on that side. As we were walking, you know, yeah. I said, stop, there's something there. There was a snake going up. Yeah. Remember, there's another time walking, suddenly I feel there's a foreign material in front of me. Big scorpion. Yeah. Just about one step away. Yeah. Where is that? It's called spirit energized communication. Yeah. You just know, if you're a man of God, you can pick up these things. Yeah. But sometimes God will hide it from you. Not all the time you will know. Elijah didn't know. Amen. We are not God that will know all things. Who's going to die tomorrow? Who's going to have a new car? Who's going to get married? Who's your life partner? I will be sitting here like this. <laughs> you know, we cannot treat God this way. God will not tell you everything. But he will allow certain things to happen because he's making us. He's processing us. He's making us become like him. So that we can depend on him totally. Rely on him totally. Completely yielded to his presence. Even though you are authorized. Jesus in us has authority over all flesh. Amen. That he should give eternal life to, to as many as you have given him. Hello. God has given us authority. Continue reading verse 3. Let's read. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. The second prayer point I'm going to pray tonight is that you must know him. Do you know your God? Or you know about him. Two different things. Huh? You know about um, Joe Biden. Or you know Joe Biden. You know only about him. You don't know him. Many people, even in this house, you only know about me. You don't know me. You may be sons and daughters in this house coming to this church many years. But you do not know me. I told you, Andrew, the day. I text you. I say, you do not know much about me. You have yet to learn. Are you hearing me? You may think that you know. 
That's why the Bible says, in, give me Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Genesis 4 1. Let's look at this. Adam knew his wife. Give me KJV. Adam knew his wife and she conceived. That word knew in Greek word means intercourse. You're not hearing me. Hello? It's called intimate relationship. Give me an amplified message Bible. I see whether any of the version have it or not. Unless you pull out the Greek Bible, then you know the word knew. Now man, Adam, knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. Uh, message. You see, ah, this one. This is close. Adam slept with his wife. Are you getting this? The Greek word there is knew. I knew my wife. That's why my daughter was born. It's called conception. Hello? Yeah. Are you hearing me? So when Jesus prayed that prayer in John 17, he said, you must, they must know you as I know you. Means I must be so intertwined with them and they must be so woven together with me. Then the way I know you is the way they will know you. You understand? That's why you got to understand. When you read the scripture, if you just read it for reading sake, you won't know what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, I know the father. You really know the father? Are you sure? Maybe you just know about the father. You do not know the father. Are you hearing me? Now, be careful, uh, young girls. One more time. I want to warn the young girls. There's an AI that's been released. They can take your father's voice from anywhere and make a prank call like your father. <laughs> Natasha, you might receive a call with the sound of daddy. Natasha, I need you to come down to here. I'm here. That's why all families must have secret code. Yes. All family. I'm telling you, we are living in an era so many things can go wrong. Don't take things lightly. Let me warn you. Secret code. Ask the question. You sure? If daddy is going to ask you to come, daddy will say something. This part AI don't know. AI can only copy the sound. But they do not know the secret code. Teach your children this. I've just given you one important key for your family. Including your wife, your husband. There will be a secret code. Is Vani here? Where's Vani? She's not here. Vani is at home. Oh, she's not online. If Vani should call you using her voice, come back home. Daniel is having fever. <laughs> Where are you now? Oh, I'm at Bukit Tinggi, waiting for you in Jasko. <laughs> Actually, Vani is at home, but somebody is calling you using your voice. There must be a secret code. If you are the real money, say these few words. What do you know about me? <laughs> in an, even in an emergency, you must be able to pull back and then think for a few seconds. Because there is a way that deception is coming to deceive God's people. Amen? Avalanche of deception is coming. That's why you must know the way, know the father the way that Jesus know. I've just explained to you from Genesis. Adam slept with his wife. Adam knew his wife. And then child was conceived. So I, I, I hope you understand the impact of the word new. Hello? The impact of the word new. Can I go a little bit, can I take a little bit more deeper? The scripture says, if you commit adultery, if you slept, sleep with a person outside your wedlock, wedding, what happens? You become one with that person. Have you read the scripture before? And that's how powerful it is. That means you must know God in such a way there's no adultery. You, the word of God is unadulterated word. Amen? That kind of conviction must come upon you. That's why last Sunday I teach the young children. I say, love is a can I hear it again? Love is what? Decision. It's not feeling. What did I say, guys? Love is what? Ezekiel, what did I say? 
Coming to church, is it a feeling? Is what? A decision. Amen? Rising in the morning to pray is not feeling. I don't feel like rising up. I don't want to get up. No, it's a decision you make. Because you want to know the Father. I want you to stand to your feet and pray this prayer that you will know the Father and the true God just as how Jesus knows the Father. Pray and ask God to give you the revelation of knowing the Father today. Come on, pray. Come on. Intensify a bit more. Intensify a bit more. Help us to know your God. Help us to know you. Help us to know you. In this hour, we want to know the Father. Know the Father like how Jesus know you. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Sit down. My phone has gone gray. That means it's sleeping time. But I will end in a short while. Let me put back the blue color. Now I'm telling the computer to listen to me. Starting from this group. Eliza, stand up. Do you know about Pastor Helen or you know her? Ah, I see. Let us be truthful tonight. <laughs> Why you do not know her? But I thought we are family. External. <laughs> okay, what will you do to know her? Ask. Okay, Pastor Ellen, stand up. You sit down. Do you know about him? Or you know him? About him. You know him or you know about him? You know him. See the difference? Because he's your husband. But this relationship is not just between husband and wife. You know that's your auntie, right? Jocelyn, you know about her, you know her. You know her. Why? Because the relationship has gone deeper. Now, question. Is it possible for you to know about Sherwin? Or is it possible to know Sherwin? Like how Tarini know? Tarini, do you really know him or know about him? <laughs> huh? Stand up. You know him. Betul, eh? Betul. Give them a hand. See, we only know about, actually the truth is inside the church, we only know about one another. We do not know the person. That's why the relationship cannot go to the next level. So the question is, what must we do, Andrew, to know about, to know the person? What must you do? Spend more time. Good point. Give me another point. Marion, what must you do? What must you do to know Ruth? Buy something for her birthday. <laughs> Get to know her. You know, the best way to know the person uh, is do the things that you don't like to do. And do it for the person. The best way to know your wife is die to yourself and your ambition and your feeling. And if she wants to eat me goreng, on that day you hate me goreng, eat it for her sake. <laughs> I'm not saying amen. You see, Sherwin is the only one laughing there. Sherwin, you know what I'm saying is true or not? How many times you have died for her? Many times, right? Many times, right? That's why I think you probably know her more than she know you. Give them a hand. <laughs> I had coffee with him the other day. You know what I'm saying? 
Many of us in church, we only know Matthew Deang, Brother Matthew sitting down there, you know about him. Let me ask his relative, Uncle Francis, do you know Matthew or you know about him? About him only, you don't know him. Huh? Okay, can ask in Tamil. Uh? How do you say that in Tamil? About and know about know about him and Pastor, you're translating that. Oh, he, he's not in the headset. How do you say that? How do you post this question? Angel, can you help me? Angel is a Tamil scholar. You know about him or know him? What he said? Know him and know about him. Wow, this is another dimension. <laughs> this, is, this is a different level now. Andrew pointed out one thing. Spend time. Now, spending time is a decision. There's a lot of inconvenience involved. Coming to church, worship. At convenience is not a true worship. Worship involves sacrifice. Am I right? In order for Jesus to say this word, Father, as I know you, may they know you too. There's a lot of sacrifice here. That's why John 17, if you read it carefully, you'll cry. The prayer of Jesus for his disciples before he, he was taken up. This was the last prayer he prayed for his disciples. Go back before you go to bed. Read John 17. That prayer is so intense. I don't know how you read John 17, but when I read it, it's so intense. The heart of Jesus for the disciples. He prayed not only for the disciples, but the one to come, that's you and me. He also prayed for the church in that chapter. So, what must we do to know the person? Spend time. What else? Listen to the person. What else? Sometimes you got to listen to rubbish too. And you must be big enough to handle it. Without getting contaminated. You got to be bigger than them. Because even though they are telling you rubbish or throwing things that are negative, your capacity has to be bigger. Your tank has to be bigger. I heard the New Zealand Prime, Prime Minister step down. One of the things that she said, she said, my tank is not big, big enough to handle what's coming. I mean, she know the responsibility is greater. She couldn't handle because she knows what's coming. So it's better for her to step down rather than make, making blunders. You know what I'm saying? So if your capacity is not big enough, how are you going to hold them? Because when you're getting to know somebody or go the extra mile to know the person, there is a lot of sacrificial lifestyle involved. Surrender, sacrificial, and selfless. These three things. Surrendered life, sacrificial life, selfless life. These three dimensions will help you to know the person. If you don't have these three, it's almost impossible you will only know about them. You will not be able to know them. Because anytime you want to get closer to the person, you get offended. Or you get put off. You may have certain standard. They may not have. Then you know what? Ah, I don't want to talk to them. Oh, my way is different. My way. Actually, your way is a good problem. <laughs> you know? You know what I'm saying or not? I did it my way. You know what song? Frank Sinatra, you know that? You all know? Ah, let me know. You know, you know Frank Sinatra? Oh, yep, his favorite. <laughs> I did it my way. <laughs> Nathan shaking the head. <laughs> Today you cannot enter the house. <laughs> 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 he exposed me. <laughs> 
Angeline, do you know about Paul or you know Paul? He's your brother. You know him because your brother. Did you fight with him before? Did he beat you? When we were young. Now God or not? Now no lah. You see, when you fight today, I was upstairs. I heard some laughter was going on at my living hall. So I, I just I took a, a little nap. I was tired. They come down. I hear who's laughing so loud. Then I come down the staircase. I saw Eliza and, and Timmy having a laughing themselves there. And they were working together, folding clothes. So I took a picture secretly. <laughs> and then I sent it to the channel. I said, what is that? I said, it was a joy to, for me to see how brotherly love was there. They're working together. And when you're doing something together, there was bonding. That's why you got to find things to do together. I have to force myself to go to the garden. <laughs> for what? I actually don't want to do gardening. But I have to find a way to go for her. Because she's doing gardening. I'm still dying to play chess with her. <laughs> I have not crossed this one. <laughs> Once in a while she'll pull out the file and say, You say you want to play chess. You still haven't done it. <laughs> so now I have to die to myself. To go to where she is. So that I can win her. Just like how Sharvin is doing things. For Tarani. Am I right Sharvin? Both of you from different background. Complete different background. That's why I always say. Marriage is not about fork and fork. You know. It's fork and spoon. How are you going to eat? You need to have spoon. That's why two different personalities. But the reason why we can come together. Because we have God factor. That's why the book of Ephesians talks about the church and Jesus. Jesus is the head. The church is the body. Just as how Jesus gave his life for the, for the church. That's how the church must also honor. Are you getting this? Now, in the church, this is so vital. If you don't do this and take it to the next level, we will not be able to impact and influence the community. Because outside there, the standard is so low. I'm telling you, outside there, there's no such thing called loyalty. Outside there, there's no such thing called permanent friends. There's no permanent friends. It's business, bro. You know? It's business. Come on. You know what I'm saying? They don't care. There's no such thing called loyalty. There's no such thing as going all the way until the end, I'm with you. There's no such thing. Only in church. And that's why when you go out there, you, your, your standard and my standard must be very high. And they will look at us and they admire the way we labor for one another. Are you getting this? Like today, I told you I went for Sing Se, my lake here. And I found one guy in, in, in Sedang. So Pastor Sai had a fall and his lake also need to be adjusted. So he, says, he said to me, you think today is open? Huh? In the morning he called me. He said, I'm not sure, but today the traffic can be very bad. No. Then he, he said to me, he's coming from PJ. And you know he's my brother in the, in the Lord. He's a pastor, he's my brother in the Lord. So I said to him, it's okay, I will, queue, I will go there and queue for you. He said, sure man, you're going to do this. I said, it's okay. In my heart I was thinking, if it is my father, I will do it for him. I said, I will, I will queue for you. He said, you don't have to do that. He say, I said to him, when you're leaving PJ, just let me know what time you're leaving so I know the ETA, then I can go there and wait for you. So we, we coordinated that time, and I arrived there and waited for him. This is what we do. We go against our convenience. If you really want to know the person, go against your own will. Oh, you didn't, you're not saying Amen. If you really want to know the person in this house, you go against the, your own will, your own limitation, like how David went all the night, the, the night time to go and visit. Yeah. You, you, it's not that you want to do it at your convenience. Yeah. No, I want to do it against my own will. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. 
you know, Jesus left the throne. Who will go? Remember in the book of Revelation, who will go down and open the scroll? Jesus said, I will go. Even the angels were shocked. Why would he leave the throne and become a man and die for this? That's why the scripture says, even the angels are looking into it. Why did Jesus left the throne room to become a man? I pray that this will be two prayer points tonight because I don't want to hold you too long. First point. What was her first prayer point? You must become a building block, not a stumbling block. The second prayer point that I really want you to pray is that you must know God in the way that Christ know him and you must now know one another, know, not what, know about one another. You must go the extra mile to know one another. Just as how Christ knows you and you know Christ. I want you to stand to your feet. Let's pray tonight. Take these two prayer points one more time. And let's really push it in the spirit before I release you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because of time, because I got seven or six or seven points. I'll come back after Chinese New Year and we build this strong. Amen. Yeah. And that's how legacy is going to be transferred. Because what, the way I know God and the way you know God cannot be different. The way I know God and the way you know God must be the same. Let's all pray in the Holy Ghost. Shiri anda la rabari anda la rabah. Shanda la rabari anda la rabah. Maam branda la rabari anda la rabah. Shanda la rabari anda la rabah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, in this hour. Help us, O God, to know you. Help us not to become a stumbling block, but to become a building block for you. Teach us your ways, O God. Teach us your ways. Teach us, teach us. Teach us, O God. Teach us, teach us, O God. Sheri anda la rabari anda la rabari anda la rabari anda la rabah. Come on, come on, intensify. Pray a bit more stronger. Pray a bit more stronger. Tonight, pray a bit more stronger. Lift up your voices. Come on. Can you hold somebody's hand beside you? Behind you, just pray. I want you to pray a bit more stronger. Pray a bit more stronger tonight. Kri anda la rabah, shanda la rabah, rianda la rabah. Mam branda la rabah, rianda la rabah, shanda ba ye mbron dorobo. Maso torobo, rianda la rabah. Come on. Pray and let's push this in our spirit. This group here, Nathan. Nathan. Can you form a group here and just pray? Pray a bit more stronger because you cannot be dislocated. This kind of dimension, you need one another to push it. In the name of Jesus, Kemra and the Rubo, come on, pray. Pray for those who are standing with you, beside you, behind you. In the name of Jesus. Shambran Dalaraba, Lord, help us, O God, to become a building block, not a stumbling block. Help us to know you, O God, like never before. Know the Father and teach us to know one another. In the name of Jesus, break every barriers, break every limitation, break every offense. In the name of Jesus, break every strongholds in our mind, strongholds in our thinking pattern. Let our mind be healed. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Shiriyanda la rabah, riyanda la rabah, riyanda la rabah. Mam branda la rabah, riyanda la rabah. Sondo robo, riyanda la rabah, shanda la rabah. Sokobo, yam branda la rabah, riyanda la rabah. Ye, 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 ye. Sobo, mombo, bo, randa rabah, riyanda la rabah. Mambron Dolorobo Shandalarabari and Raba. Teach us God. Teach us. Let the power of God fall upon every life of God tonight in the name of Jesus. That our lives will never be the same. Change us, God, tonight. Transform us. Do a deep work inside us. Touch our heart. Change our mind. Change us, God. Only a changed life can change another life. Be healed, be restored. Be built, be governed by His grace, in the name of Jesus. Soko bo randa ba yam randa la rabari endere be, mam randa la rabari enda la rabah shanda la rabari endere be. Thank you, Lord. Randa la rabah shanda la rabari endere be. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Randa la rabah shanda la rabari enda la rabah. Mam bron dolorobo shanda la rabari anda la rabari anda raba. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Rianda la rabah shanda la rabari anda la rabari anda raba. 
Father, we thank you, God. Thank you for giving us this understanding, O oh God, tonight. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for divine principles. Thank you for the God. Only you can make it happen. We can't do it on our own. We can only do it with your, with your word, O oh God. May your word come upon us. Align us. Adjust us. Align our thinking pattern. Adjust the way we see things, O oh God. Align us tonight. So that there will be no loophole for demonic attacks. That we can become formidable force to reckon with. In the name of Jesus, change us, God, to become a strong force. That when we go out into the marketplace, the devil has no power, no foothold. In the name of Jesus, help us to become alert, help us to be sharp, strong, vibrant for you. Raise us up to become a building block that will not stumble. In Jesus' mighty name, help us to know you, help us to know one another. In the way that you want us to know you, O oh God. Thank you, we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.